All right, guys, today we are going to be getting into population ecology. So characteristics of a population. A population is a group of individuals that belong to the same species that live in the same area at the same time. Population size is just the number of individuals in the population. Size is a very important characteristic of population, but can be very difficult to measure. Geographic distribution is the range of a population. This term describes the area that is inhabited by that population, and the range can vary in size. It may just be a few centimeters, such as the mold on a piece of your bread. The range can also be huge, such as the alpine meadows of Yellowstone National Park. Population density is the number of individuals per unit area. So density is one of the main characteristics that describes a population. So there is tremendous variation in density depending on the species and depending on the ecosystem. Some populations have low densities while other populations have high densities. And I just want to have you look at this picture up here on the top. You'll see a petri dish that has a bunch of dark spots on it. Those are bacteria colonies. While it may only look like there is only a few spots on the plate, each one of those spots actually contains thousands upon thousands of colonies of bacteria. Population dispersion is the, is the spatial distribution of individuals within the population. And there are three types of this dispersion. We have random, clumped, and uniform or even. So clumped over here, you can see that we have kind of made our own two populations because these guys are clumped together and these guys are clumped together. Now a uniform population dispersion is that all of these are equally distant from the others around them. While random is, they're, they're just random. They are all over the place. So a population sample can be conducted to determine the population density of a species. By tracking populations over time, ecologists can see how these populations have changed and may be able to predict how they're likely to change in the future. Today, we are going to model a common population sampling technique called a quadrant sampling. Now all populations are dynamic. This means that they change in size and composition over time. So to understand the changes that are taking place in a population, the following must always be considered. Birth rate. Birth rate is the number of births occurring in a given period of time. The death rate or the mortality rate, this is the number of deaths in a given period of time. And life expectancy, this is the length of time an individual is expected to live. So the mortality rate of the individuals in the population generally follows one of the following patterns. So these are called survival ship curves because they show the likelihood of survival at different ages throughout the lifetime of an organism. So what do these graphs indicate regarding species survival rate and strategy? Well, we have type 1 here. Type 1 is a high death rate in a post-reproductive years. That's what this is showing us. Because down here, we have the percentage of maximum lifespan. And over here, we have survival per thousand. So here is our type 2. This is a constant mortality rate throughout the lifespan. 
And then down here we have type 3. This is a very high early mortality rate. But the few survivors then live long and they stay reproductive. So these curves are very interesting. And every organism will fall into one of these three different types. A population may remain very stable over time, or there can be fluctuations in the population size. At any given time, a population may experience tremendous growth or rapid decline. This can be based on anything that is happening in the world at that time. So growth rate is the amount by which a population size changes over a given period of time. So there are three factors that can greatly increase or decrease the size of a population. The number of births, the number of deaths, and the number of individuals that enter, which is immigration, or leave, which is emigration, the population. So over here, we have our births and our immigration, which is leading to an increase in the population, while a death or the birds leaving will obviously lead to a decrease of the population. If more individuals are being born than die, the population size will increase. If the birth rate is equal to the death rate, the population will remain stable. But if the death rate is greater than the birth rate, the population will decrease. Now, when studying population density, it's important to ask the following questions. Why is the birth rate unusually high or low? Why are more individuals dying than normal? Is there a reason for an unusually high immigration or emigration rate? There are two ways to describe population growth, exponential and logistic. So exponential growth describes a population that is increasing rapidly. The larger the population gets, the faster it will continue to grow. So one example of this is with bacteria. Bacteria can multiply so quickly, and that's where we see that dramatic growth in population. Now, with exponential growth, it's viewed on a graph, and the pattern of the growth is a J-shaped curve. Now, a J-shaped curve indicates the population is growing exponentially. In real life, populations cannot continue to grow exponentially for very long. Resources will begin to become scarce and waste will accumulate, which inevitably limits the growth. Now, in addition, competition for the limited resources will intensify as the population continues to grow. So a limiting factor is any factor that restrains the growth of a population. Examples can be space to grow, food, water, predation, competition, human disturbances, and so many other things can limit population growth. So how will resources be limited during the growth of the food population? Well, food will become more and more scarce as there's more people to feed, more people to keep healthy and alive. There are may be water shortages for the same reason that food may become scarce. A disease might be introduced into a population. If that happens and it's very deadly, for example, COVID-19, we experience a high death rate in certain areas and that decreased our population. So the population could run out of space. This was a situation in China. They actually put a law into place that each Chinese family be could only have one child because of the population. 
Additional predators may be attracted to the rising population. So predators may see it as more people in a given area or more of anything in a given area and see that as an all-you-can-eat buffet. There will be increased competition between the members of a group. So if food and water is getting scarce, there's going to be more competition of trying to, you know, protect your loved ones and your family, but everybody's going to want that. So you are going to be fighting for those resources. And the accumulations of waste could lead to an increase in diseases and poor health. This is something that actually was a player in the beginning of the bubonic plague or the black plague in England. There was so much waste just out in the streets that diseases absolutely ran rampant through that time and so many people died from diseases and the poor health that they were sustaining. So eventually a growing population will reach the carrying capacity of the environment. A carrying capacity is the number of individuals the environment can support over a long period of time. This is when we've reached more of a stable equilibrium. The size of the population will fluctuate above and below the carrying capacity of the environment. And limiting factors is what determines the carrying capacity. The availability of abiotic factors such as water, oxygen, and space, and biotic factors such as food, dictates how many organisms can live in an ecosystem. A model of population growth in which growth slows or stops following a period of exponential growth is called logistic growth. So starting in the mid-1800s, the human population began to grow exponentially. Why did this happen? Well, the beginning of agriculture and industry made life much easier and much safer for people. Food was more available on a regular basis. Goods can be shipped around the world. There was improved sanitation and living conditions, eliminating the high levels of diseases. And the death rate dropped while birth rate increased. Life just got so much better in so many ways. And that's why we see this rapid increase in population. All right, guys, that is all I have for you today on population ecology. Make sure if you have any questions, you be sure to bring those to me and I